So what is your stance on the use of restraints? You know, when we think of restraints, traditionally we think of the straight jacket, of course. Uh, we think of hospital settings, you know, the gurneys with the, the restraints. Uh, I have strong feelings about using restraints. I, I'm against that. Now, mind you, um, <laughs> well, I mean, seatbelts are restraints, so I'm for that, you know, but I'm talking about restraints in psychiatric settings. You know, law enforcement has to use restraints. You know, they're apprehending dangerous criminals and things like this. Um, they use the handcuffs and shackles and all kinds of neat gadgets, I guess. Um, and that's totally necessary, you know, so. <clears throat> but uh, what made me become really against using them, it has to do with the fact that, <clears throat> pardon me, my sister had died uh, at age 38 from breast cancer in 1999, and now I, she had a, a living will in place. But from my, from what I understand, the girl that she was with, my sister was gay or bisexual. Um, the girl that she was, or woman that she was with, got into an argument, and the girlfriend ripped it up. I wasn't there, you know. Uh, but, so the hospital didn't have any documentation that my sister did not want to be kept alive by artificial means. So she had went for CAT scan and her heart stopped beating in the CAT scan. So she ended up on life support being incubated and all these tubes The last two weeks of her life were horrible. It, it had to be. You know, when she came to and saw she, that she had been incubated and all these IVs and things, she became combative and, you know, tried to remove all the medical devices that were hooked up. So they ended up having to give her a paralytic and they strapped her to the bed. My sister did not die with dignity. She didn't. You know, I mean, I understand, you know, with somebody potentially dangerous, I, 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 I get it, but my argument is, okay, in a psychiatric circumstance, if it takes two or three people to hold somebody down to get them uh, under control, for lack of better words, okay? Why couldn't the same two or three people administer a sedative shot and, you know, assess the person after they wake up and go from there, as opposed to that? Because restraining somebody in psychiatric setting often 23% higher likelihood of having post-traumatic stress behind being restrained. It strips a sense of, a person's sense of autonomy. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants the freedom to be able to move about. You know, now restraints were invented, you know, as a me safety measure to protect somebody from hurting him or herself or from hurting other people. Where do you draw the line with that? Circumstance with my sister was totally different. Because she didn't have paperwork in place, the hospital did what they had to do, even though they knew she was dying, she was going to die. What a predicament, you know? You know, I mean, she was full metastasis, 4B. Cancer was, had went to her brain. Um, She didn't die with dignity. 
So where do, you know, where do we draw the line? I find it ironic, you know, that we can put down a dog or cat when they're sick, terminal, but we can't do it with a person. Dr. Kevorkian went to jail. To me, I think he had the most humane approach. I do. We can put down a dog or cat, but we can't put down a person. Why? This, you know, this is controversial, you know, down to the, you know, the restraints. It, it brings up a whole slew of questions, ethical issues, everything, you know. I arrived at my feelings because of what I saw with my sister. And because of that, I put my own advanced directives in place. I'll be damned. I do not want that. You know, I've told it. My loved ones, don't you dare do that to me. I don't care if we have an argument the night before and I end up on life support, let me go. You know, deal with that. Know that I would forgive you and that I still love you. Just let me go. Don't do you that, know, that's a selfish thing. Um, so, I mean, yeah, law enforcement, there's absolute need. Yeah, you're apprehending dangerous criminals and, you know, People have no problem killing somebody else. They have nothing to lose. You know, escapees, things like that. Of course. Of course. You know, and then, yeah, they, I mean, nursing homes, some nursing homes use restraints. They use to help prevent falls. So it has its medicinal purpose, absolutely. Absolutely. But in psychiatric setting, I'm thinking, you know, you're taking a, sen a person's sense of autonomy. If you're a rape victim, there's issues of being re-traumatized because of being restrained. 23% of patients who have been restrained because of psychiatric develop post-traumatic stress behind that. It's gotta be a frightening thing. It's gotta be a frightening thing to have, you know, four or five people holding you down and throwing these things on your wrist and your legs and then you can't move, you know? I mean, think about what that really is. It's, you know, in this way, you know, with all the advancements we've made medically, scientifically, pharmacologically speaking, technology, and the list goes on, restraining somebody because a psychiatric outbreak seems primitive. There are places that totally rely on restraints today, you know? It's a scary thing. Um, I think it should be the absolute last resort. The absolute last resort. You know, when medications have been given and every other method has been exhausted when every, you know, all means have been exhausted, then what choice do you have, you know, okay. Um, and yeah, of course, it's a case-by-case -case basis, it is, because no two people are the same. Behavioral patterns can be similar, of course. That's how we understand diagnoses and prognosis and things like this. There is absolutely a commonality, but Where do we draw the line? 